Okay, so today I'm going to show you how to make a, a crab pot, a lobster pot crab pot out of willow. Um, now I've made, uh, you can see I've made this one here. I've, I've got a couple more that I've made, some that are not quite as good. Um, I'm still in the learning process. I, I went on a course with a local guy called Max Godion. That's how I made this one. And um, I'm going to use, I've got, I made a template here and I'm going to use this uh, to make the the crab pot is slightly different to how I would have done it on the course um, just because of the number of holes and the size of it but uh, yeah so let me show you the the equipment and the materials I'm going to be using okay right you can see here I've got um, two sets of willow so this is green willow this is this is um, the willow that's just been cut however this is this has actually been um, cut quite a while ago it's starting to dry out now so hopefully it'll be all right and then hopefully you can see in the shadow there I've got some five foot, five foot willow, and that's for doing the binding. So the the big seven foot willow, the green willow, is for the uh, making the ribs of the pot, and then you've got the the five foot willow for doing all the bindings. And then inside, I don't know if you can see here. Oh, actually, it's probably not a good idea. Inside my um, uh, my my trough. I've got some st stick soaking, so I'll get those out later. Right, so this is the pot stand. You, know, you can see I've already got a bit of willow in there. Um, this is essentially made up of a, a wooden disc that's been screwed into the top of what was an old bird tail. You can see there the, the bird table legs. Um, and the screw I used was one of these like coach screws, so you've only got the, the threaded bit at the, the bottom, so that essentially it allows the, the wooden disc to spin, so I can actually turn it around as I'm working, which is handy. And obviously I've just got a washer on the top there. And then underneath I've got, um, I'm not sure if you can see this properly, but this is a bit of old waste pipe, and I've secured it into the bottom of the disc so that when you spin it, the waste pipe spins as well and the reason i've got that there is because at the bottom you've got these uh this this string which i tie the willow onto and uh so then the willow will spin with it otherwise it will get all tangled up so yeah that's essentially it pretty simple it's not perfect because it squeaks and drives me nuts but yeah, it works so that's what i'm using for the time being oh blimey i think i'm gonna need my son my sunglasses soon. Um, right, so to start off with, we need to, for the main ribs to go in, we need to actually sharpen these to actually get uh, the the ribs into those holes. So all I do is use a Stanley knife, be careful, and uh, just sharpen it so that the it's a smaller diameter and it can fit in. So here you can see, it will now fit in. So you can get it to be as snug as you can. And try and get it so that the because it'll naturally bend um, so this is what we're gonna really have is to, to make the pot uh, to make the pot you're gonna need to to bend it down actually that's broken I'm hoping that it's not too dried out this willow and just chop off the end of it it's coming to the end of its useful life that's for sure so if I just uh, that in like so <laughs> right so really you want it to be able to bend down like this um, to make the structure of the pot um, so yeah so basically I'm gonna have to sharpen enough for all around here and, and quite a few more actually because we keep on having to add to the to the ribs so um, yeah let me do that bit and I'll show you how to how to start the binding then So as you can see, we've got all of the ribs in now. 
Um, I've got them just sticking straight up. I haven't bent them over or anything yet. Um, so, because what we need to do is build the neck of the pot up. Now, uh, probably to about I don't know about here before we start bending it over and then um, and when making a weave all the way around. So, what we need to do to start with, just to do this neck, very simple. We just uh, do a simple weave. So we've got we put one um, and like that, and then one inside. And then what you do is you push one up. This is this is we've got two pieces of five foot um, brown mold here, and so that's all we do here is we and then we keep on going round and round. I've put the camera in exactly the wrong place here. Go away, Mr. Fly. And you literally just keep on going round and round. And when you get round to to this bit here, you uh, just build on top of what you've done before. And when you get to the end, when you get to when these bits of withy run out, when you know get too thin, you just add some more bits on top. So I'll just carry on going round. see this, this this willow is drying out you can see how it's kinking I was finding that the, la the last part I did actually it's got a lot worse so I think this is gonna be the last one I'm going to attempt with this um, willow without soaking it first um, right now so we've got to the end so we've got some it, it's, it's a bit small now so all you do is you add another one on and so for a little while you've got two um, and then where you've added that one there got another one here so all we do is add that one like so right it's a bit of a boring bit so I'll, I'll speed this bit up So here we go. This is the um, the neck of the pot built. As you can see, I've secured the, um, the 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 sides with cable ties to stop them from unraveling. I've just done four. As you can see, actually, it's not perfect, and I I'm yet to get the exact knack to this. You can see here. Look, it's a bit a bit higgledy piggledy. See this, uh, and I think it might be a result actually of the willow being a bit dried out, but. Um, here, it's, you can see it's, a, it's hanging off a little bit there, but I'm ho hoping it can, all I need it to do is to be functional. Apologies, Max, if you are watching this, because I'm going to, I'm making it slightly different to the normal traditional style. Now, ordinarily, you'd start weaving all the way around, building the pot, bending these over, but um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, because I've only got 16 holes all the way around, and as you can imagine, as you, let me just show you, so as you bend these over, so this is essentially what we're going to do, we're going to bend them over like this, um, so as you bend them over, they're going to be, the gap between here gets wider as it goes, and so you keep on having to add bits of willow. Now, well, I'm, going to, I'm going to have to do this as I go as well, keep on adding bits of willow, 
but to start off with I'm actually going to add uh, another another seven foot willow into each gap where the, the existing rib comes out so yeah so I'm going to do that all the way around so instead of having 16 um, ribs I'm going to have 32 coming out so what I do is I will get another bit of willow you can see that I've sharpened and then find the gap in between like so and then force it down until it goes down to the, the, the base. So you can see here, I've now got uh, two bits that in the same gap. And it just it just means that I've got more of a structure to the to the pot and I, and I can space them out and, the, and the, there's less of a gap in between. Um, but I am still gonna have to add bits of willow as I'm going, but I'm gonna do that all the way around. As you can see, we've got two in each of the, the holes. It's it's not gonna be the most beautiful pot, that's for sure, but um, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna bend this over, so bend these these um, these rods over, and then secure them at the bottom on the, with the string, and trying to get them as even as possible. So what you do, I'm gonna do only four at a time, bend them over like so. Now because the willow is a, is dried out a bit I'm going to try not to kink it because it's very easy to do. So for the time being you want to try and bend it down as much as possible and what I do is I try and put them all to all the pieces of willow to one side of the the waste pipe in order to make it easier for when you're turning it around because if you don't, if you put them either side, then as you're turning, they get caught up. So, so let me just uh, tie this on. So I just do a round turn, two half hitches. So it's easy to undo because we're going to have to go back and secure this probably a few times. It's a bit of a pain, but it's quite an important point because what will happen as you're making it, as you're making the, uh, the, the pot um, and, and as you're weaving, these bits will come unsecure. So you keep on having to tie it back down. So otherwise you end up having a really wide pot. Right, so I'm gonna go around and do all the rest of them. So. Just sort of show you the bottom where it's all tied on so you can see here i've tried to do it in sort of like a spiral like that so that when we turn the pot so i'll be i'll be building it this way it's not uh it's dragging on the ground but if you if i were to do it that way it'd dig in so i've put them all the same side of the waste pipe okay so now i'll start the binding process I'm going to stick this as a five foot with the one that I use for the neck. And uh, if I just start off, stick, stick one in there like so. Just need to go away. And then I'll put one in the next bit. And what I'll do, actually, I'll try and start sort of separating them all out now. So. Um, if I just actually, if I just put this one underneath to start with, <sighs> can 
tell this this um, willow is starting to become um, a little bit dry. It's kinking a bit more than it would have done previously. So see this one here is kinked like that. Now, I don't know whether that's because it's started to dry out or it's just the way it was when I just sometimes you get the odd bit of willow. Really difficult to do this and film it at the same time. So, so now it's under and over not just like we same hole um, like so there we go and at the moment I've only got um, obviously two bits of willow and what I'll do is I'll I'll increase it to two and then three three pieces so that you you've got a bind but just for the moment just because I'm trying to separate those bits I'm just gonna stick keep it at keep it at one for a few bits and uh, so yeah I'll uh, keep going with that all the way around hopefully you'll be able to see I just thought I'd show you um, how I'm getting on. So you can see here that uh, it's not not perfect. You can see it's a little bit when I'm bringing the camera down level. You can see it's not there's a, there there are dips and stuff. It's not perfect. And the idea is to get get the the weave just follow the weave around and then have an equal gap in between. The idea is you just don't want the gaps big enough for the crab to get through really. Um, uh, and and you know you might get some small crabs climb through, but hopefully you'll retain all the bigger crabs. So so I'm going to continue going round. This is quite laborious, and um, the but you you really must try and um, keep the binding as thick as you can. See if you can keep it at three uh, strands on each side as you go around. Uh, but you can see here, look, you see see how it's it's cracked a bit. It's where the the willow's drying out. So it's not ideal, but hopefully it'll be functioning. So I'm going to carry on going, and yeah, we'll just keep on going around until we get we get enough of a, a drop. We really want to take it down so that there's enough of a drop from the neck for the crabs to get in. Um, yeah, all of mine are different so far, but they they should all be functional. Just thought I'd show you. We're now getting to a point where you can see this gap is well. If you look at my finger, it's about if you if I put all my fingers in, there's four, four. I can fit all four of my fingers in. Now that's a that gap is a bit too big, and you can see it's actually between the you know our strands separated the the four strands, so it's in between like that. So so what I'm gonna, <coughs> so what I'm going to do. Is I'm going to add another rib in at this stage. So, 
See if I can show you easy how to do this. What I'm going to do, I've got a seven foot withy that I've sharpened on the end. And what I'm going to do is I am going to thread it up through here and into um, the next binding up like that. So you're just adding as you go. I'm going to snip these bits off afterwards because um, they'll be sharp. So um, yeah, and then of course this this wouldn't be tied down. So what I tend to do to, for the time being is I tend to just try and thread it through um, some of the ones that are already there. <laughs> I'm going to make a right and mess up of this now. Hang on. So if I just. Uh, Thread, it, thread that through like so. It's not going to be ideal because it's not going to be tight, but just for the time being, just to get it out of the way. So there we go. Now, if you see here, we've now got it. And what I'll do is I'll actually weave that in to the to the rest of it, so we haven't got such a big gap anymore. And uh, so I'll do that as we keep on going round. Every time I see there's a big enough um, gap, then I will I'll try to fill, fill that in. I always hate, hate giving close-ups like this because it makes it look a lot worse when it looks closer up. Um, anyway, it looks, looks, if you ever look here, I'll, I'll bring it level, it's pretty flat, it's not too bad. Um, okay, the ribs are a little bit higgledy-piggledy. But, um, so what you'll see now is I've now added ribs in in every every gap of the round. So I've got another, what's that, six, another six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. seven. Eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah. So I've got another eight ribs that I've added in as well. Um, I'll probably, as I go down, you'll see, let me just see here, it's probably the easiest way to show it here. Um, there's a rib that I've added here. And as, as it goes further down, it's going to get bigger. So what I'll end up doing is putting another rib. So you put a rib in here. We've put a rib in here. Going to put another rib in here and um until it gets to the bottom so the bottom will, be, will probably be around about here so keep on going around try and get the gap between the um the bindings relatively consistent i mean the most important thing is the gaps aren't big enough for crabs to get through um but that's the most important thing for me at the moment as i'm sure as years the years go on when i'm making these i'll try and make them a little bit neater each time and i'll, I'll develop skills in how to do it but uh for the time being, it's not too bad. Now, what I'm going to do is, as I've added some ribs and I've just tucked them in at the bottom, I'm, I'm actually going to undo all the bindings at the bottom, uh, on, on all, all the ties, and I'll um, I'll retie it and put make sure it's it's tied down because, as you can see here, if you can look here, see how it's like sort of bellowing out a little bit here. So what we want to keep it nice and tight so that you you don't get a big wide pop. So. There you go, so all I'll do is I'll tie those down and then I'll, I'll carry on. Right, so there we have it. All of the twists are done. 
so it's just the base to go. Now what happens is when, when you come to the end here I just try and um, meet up um, the ends with the, the previous row and then what I, what I tend to do then, I know it's cheating again, but um, just use a couple of cable ties to secure that the, the, the last bits, the ends in place so I, I just uh, put that in a few places um, just to secure it. Now what I'm going to do now is I'm going to remove it off the stand and then I trim it up a bit because um, there's a lot, you can see all the spiky bits sticking up so before I start the base there's lots of different ways you can do the base uh, so I'm going to do it the traditional Guernsey way um, but there's loads of other ways you can do it so let's, um, I've just got to untie it all and then get it off the uh, get it off the base. Oh, here we go. Yeah, I think it's not too bad at all. all the, uh, the bits so I'm just going to trim off this, these cable ties and then these spiky ends to the, the neck of the pot because the last thing you want to do is spike your hands when you're putting them in, putting the bait in. And if you put the base on it's more difficult to get to them. So best to do it at this stage. Alright, there we go. Um, so we can trim some other bits off afterwards, but uh, well, actually I might do some here now. So just to trim off some of the bits. sticks here and I'm going to pick out some these have been in the water too long to be honest with you um, I'm going to pick out some that are fairly sturdy and use these as a base to start the uh, to start to start the base so we're, we're going to just use these as like a sort of like a sturdy frame. This is traditionally how they are done in Guernsey, and there's lots of different ways you can do it. You can you can do it in a spiral to get make it meet it in the middle, and then there's some that um, you chop it halfway and fold it in. And, which I'm going to try all these different methods as well at some point, but for the time being. This. this is uh, the old traditional Guernsey way, so why not? Uh, let's try and find a thick one. Pretty thick. Right. I'm going to use some of these as well later on. There we go. And what I'm going to do is cable tie these in. Right. So as you can see, I've picked out the some quite sturdy bits for the for the bottom. Um, just to keep them in place again I'm just going to use the faithful uh, cable ties so I'm just going to keep them in place I mean the willow will keep it in place as well but it's 
for these first four, we'll have to. Uh, it's better to secure them down. So what we do is we use the um, we just use the uprights. So these ones, the, the ones, the, the ribs, and actually weave them through the sticks on each end, and um, and then there's probably we're probably not going to have enough, but we'll have to add to it. I'll, I'll use some willow sticks. I'll use a bit of seven foot willow as well if I have to. But um, yeah, so to start with, there's not much to weave because you just go over one, under one, and then back out through. And the same this side, so you just use the ones closest to the sticks. So as you can see there's not enough willow there, there's gaps in the bottom so uh, I'm going to need to fill those gaps in. Um, so I'm going to use a combination of willow and, um, and the willow sticks as well in order to do that. So it's a bit of a pain this bit because you have to force it through but almost there. I'm just going to trim the ends off. I'm going to trim it back completely, but I'm going to give it a little bit of a area for it to rub off. And the same with these these main sticks. I am going to take them off, but not all the way. Same bit. There we have it. One finished pot. Oh, there's a there's an end that needs trimming there. That always happens. Right, so that one needs to go. That one. There we go. And actually. I'm quite happy with that. It's fairly uniform and it's fairly sturdy. It's still not perfect, but they're getting better. So now time to test the pots out.
pot. And actually, I think that's the best one I've done yet. Daddy, I'm scared. What if I break them? Oh, well, let's hope you don't break them. So that's the one I've just done. And then I did that one last time. That's the one I made on the course. And I did make another couple as well. So we've got five all together. So I've got five to put off the beach. Now, the only problem is I think this one is a bit flimsy and I don't reckon it's good. I don't reckon it's good enough, so I might not use that one. But I think all the others are. Now, we are gonna test them out because I've got my daughter, Amy, here. <laughs> and uh, I'm not gonna stand on them because I'm way too heavy. <laughs> but let's gonna see if Amy stands, can stand on top. So, all right. Break. It's not gonna break. Go on, stand on top. Go on. Put your put your put your foot on the other side. Daddy, so put yeah, put one on that side and one on that side. Whoa. Oh no, get off. What? Oh no. Mm, that's all right. Don't worry. But I'm sure we tested this one last time. Test this one. So go and stand on this one. Well, it's gonna break. Yeah, go on. Stand on there. There we go. It just about holds your weight. Now let's go onto the. Right, now come over here to this one. Now I don't reckon you, you're just gonna really stand this any chance of standing your weight, but let, let's give it a go. Daddy. Hey. Almost. Right off. Daddy, you bent on my hand. <laughs> okay. I don't I think we're gonna give up on this idea. So that basically no that one that one will just collapse. Yeah. But this 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 one is yeah. There's no way. I think this will hold your weight either. So, I would say that the only ones that are going to be any good, really, are these two. But I'll tell you what, we're going to try them out and see actually how sturdy they need to be. Ow. Right, I hope that was uh, easy for you to follow, and hopefully you'll be able to make one of your own if, uh, by following the instructions there. Um, yeah, well, I'm going to try actually using some of these off the shore shortly, so keep a look out for the, the, uh, the videos on that. It's going to be a bit of an effort carting these down the beach, but uh, we're going to give it a go. So if you like the video, then please click on the like button. And don't forget to subscribe.